What's up guys? We sold 41 items on eBay this weekend, which is really good for us. We've been selling about 30-ish on average. And this is after doing our 60 day challenge with our Discord. So what we're doing there is listing 15 items a day. We're ending and selling similar eight and a couple other things that we make sure to check off to have our stores doing at all times. So if you're interested in joining the eBay challenge, check out the Discord. But I wanna get into some of the highlights of the items that sold. And then primarily what will be useful for you guys is gonna be shipping tips. So things that we've learned that we do every day in shipping, um, supplies that we use frequently. We have links to like all of the supplies that we use, but I wanna make sure we highlight when we use them, why we use them, and all that kind of stuff you're gonna see in this video. So real quick, just some of the items, some of the bolos that sold. These you probably won't be able to find because they're so limited, but these sold for like 225, 250, I can't, I think 260? 260, 260 a piece. We were asking 500 because there's like no comps. This person did a good job. They got ones that are pretty darn limited. Got a good deal, oh, but shit. we bought them for a good price. So there's only 40 of those in the world and that's good on them. We've been selling a lot of these like tin or uh, pressed steel toys. That's a massive bolo. Every time they sell it's like a hundred bucks or more. Yeah, they went for a hundred bucks. This went for a hundred bucks. So just this little truck. I mean, if you see them out in the wild, you gotta buy them all, especially in good condition. You probably won't see them much, but if you see one, you're probably gonna see multiple. So make sure to buy them if you do. If they have lead paint, they're even better. Yeah, like it's, it's funny how this, <laughs> all these old toys have, have gone. This is a train that sold for 120 bucks. Basically trains if they're heavy, if they're if they're big. Like those are those are the most obvious like, well yeah. Yeah, like those are those are good and we've sold a crazy amount from the hobby shop by, what did this sell for Alpo? 80 bucks. 80 bucks, that's a really, yeah. really surprising. So this is a replicas, first response car, premier edition. I don't know, we had a whole box of them. And that one surprised us. Um, I did sell my metal storm with the manual for uh, 250, so I'm really happy with that. That's a premium on that one. But I always say when you're selling video games in good condition, hold firm to your high price because demand on near mint stuff is really high, and a lot of times the comps don't really reflect what you could actually get. So you might price something like that at 200 because that's what comps look like, and it would sell in 30 minutes. You might as well wait a couple days sell it for 250 you get 50 more dollars i've been doing that for years with games and it tends to work this is another one we priced it pretty high sold for like 120 or something like that mr mosquito who'd have thunk it <laughs> if that's not on the hundred dollar games list we got to add it because i think this one has gone up in value recently um we got hack outbreak i think that sold for like 80 mm -hmm. final fantasy 3 box only uh sold for 100 we actually sold a, a different box on whatnot for 50 so Get, can get <laughs> some deals over there. Job. Yeah, goodbye there. Uninvited. Um, gosh, that went for like 60 or 70. Yeah. So that's a bolo on NES. And then Times of Lore, I think went for 100. Either 85 or 100. Yeah, I might have sent out an offer on it. Check, so check, check. Those are kind of some of the highlights. There's a bunch more sales in here. Um, <laughs> I forgot to mention A though, bunch more, you're not kidding. Yeah, wait, like 41 sales. Traded. Random stuff. Traded. Rated cards and trains, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, and our, our total of sales was over uh, 4000 so we were 4, right around that $100 average sales price, and our goal this year, I think, is to hit 80 I think that's what I said at the beginning of the year, which is aggressive. Last year, we did 75 I realize that's difficult, but we have changed and shifted a, a, our strategy and business of sourcing to really, really target high-end items. I'm saying no to more collections that don't have as many high-end items, and saying yes to the ones that are full of high-end items and paying up because we value our time. We want to maximize profit dollars per transaction. And if the higher you can get with that, the more you can make net throughout the year with the same amount of time. My goal is to prioritize my family, to continue to work 40 hours a week so that I can spend time with my kids and my wife and everything else. So I want to maximize that time as much as possible and I want to do that for Alpel and Sky Guy as well. That's the goal, and we're working at it every day. This this was a big sale, four hundred seventy dollars. It's the first print of Zelda, so it's the seven controller first print. Versus what? Versus two controllers. So this one has all seven. Uh, only the the early ones had that. So that's gone up a little bit in value. So if you see that one sealed, it's going to be worth more than the regular or second print version. And then we held out on this for like six months. It's just beautiful, near mint condition. All the bags on the inside able to get 500 bucks for that which is probably going to be the highest comp on that uh, but 
really happy with that sale. I think the buyer is going to be really happy. Some of this stuff, we have specific boxes that we reorder, and we're going to go into what boxes we reorder. We have a lot of those here. Different uh, shipping strategies and methods to keep costs down as much as possible. So stay tuned to see all of the supplies and everything that we like to use to maximize profits as well. Just a quick note on cartridge games. Every single one that we sell, we do clean with Q-tip and rubbing alcohol. I think we use like 90% or above. The higher the concentration, the better. Uh, just to make sure they're working immediately on the first load up when the buyer gets them. All right, for a cartridge game like this, we have these clear poly bags. That's a six by nine by Spartan Industrial. Have the exact links to all of the clear poly bags and sizes that we use. That's probably the most common one we use because it also works perfectly for regular size media. Then these bubble mailers, I ordered them by the 200, got the link to that, it's an eBay link. We have one link where you can get to everything, uh, Amazon and eBay, all the supplies. These uh, bubble mailers are like the best deal I can find and they work great. For a game that's like over $50, we usually double bubble it like that. That's what we call it. So one bubble mailer inside of another, seal it up that'll probably ship at an eight ounce first class mail rate unless it's a box game right box games go in boxes correct yeah so for box games like this even this final fantasy 3 box only you're gonna use probably this eight by six by four which you can use your um if you have an ebay store you can use your quarterly coupon and get the ebay branded ones which is what i do a lot but i also buy them and i have the link to the eight by six by four boxes that i use that's one of the most common sizes we go through dozens every single week so definitely check that one out and then a game like this since it's over a hundred dollars i would also say use one of those boxes just to make sure it arrives in near mint condition for cards or small card lots under twenty dollars on ebay you can ship them with the ebay standard envelope a lot of people use various different envelopes they just have to be under, I can't remember the exact size, but the dimensions have to be like less than X amount of inches. So we got one that works for it. It's a, it's a bubble envelope and you can order these really, really cheap. So I think this is one of the best ways to do it. And then I just get team set bags with top loaders or semi-rigid card holders for some protection in the back, throw them in there. And this will ship for like 93 cents at the three ounce rate. There is a little bit of risk because sometimes the tracking doesn't get uploaded, the, the cards get lost, but still overall, it becomes worth it to save the two or three dollars on shipping per card. So check the link to these out in the description. I do have that linked if you're interested. And for graded cards, we just take two of these cardboard slabs that we cut out, put one on each side, tape them together, throw that inside of one of the bubble mailers. And I think Alpel has a bunch of Stuff over here kind of prepared that we can talk about right here. One of the most common priority mill boxes that we use is the Regional A box. Um, usually can be pretty cheap. You kind of weigh it out, measure it out for a regular box, compare that to Regional A, and sometimes, like in this case, it'll be cheaper to Regional A. So we stock those right there. Definitely order those, they're free on USPS.com. This right here looks like a 14 by eight by six that we use very commonly. And even like for Amazon FBA, we'll use that for PS2 systems and Sega Genesis Model 1 systems. This is a 14-12-6 box, which we use sometimes for eBay, usually for Amazon FBA for like Xbox 360s, PS3s, and bigger systems. Eight by six by four, we mentioned that one a lot for boxed games, very common size box. That's about what this one is, but we do always keep you know, extra boxes that we get from Amazon returns and otherwise we like to reuse those. This is a boxed Xbox console and we, we searched a little bit to find a good size box for box consoles because we've been selling a lot of those. And uh, I'll link to this size. I can't remember exactly what size 22, that is. 221810? Yeah. Okay, 221810. And then this one, just for the mid size stuff, we wanted something a little bit smaller, but still big enough to hold stuff like that. And this one is 1418 something. I'll, I'll link that as well. Those are newer boxes, but we definitely like them and have already been reordering. And then you can get like the bigger boxes like this from Walmart or Lowe's. I think we've been getting usually from Lowe's. 241818, the large moving box. Then you've got the medium, which is 18 by 18 by 16. And those are a good Good cheap price, so definitely go to Lowe's if you need some of the bigger boxes. And it's worth noting with this box, even if it comes to a little bit more expensive than it would be for a box that I paid like 50 cents or a dollar for up there, 
you might still use this box because they are free. So go to USPS.com, check out all their free supplies. You do have to ship it with priority mail if you get them like that. But sometimes you factor in the fact that this is a free box and it can be cheaper even if it comes to 25 cents more because you had to buy the other box. We just sold this game for over $300. Heck yeah. How about you show everyone, and it's going to Europe. So how about yeah. you show everyone how would you bubble wrap yeah, and protect yeah. that package? Crazy on this one. This bubble wrap arm, I don't know if we have a link to this, but you can we do search need it, bubble wrap arm. We don't. We don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where I got this one. It's like a double arm it's something. A double bubble wrap arm. It's expensive. I think I got it locally or something, but search for it because they're very helpful yes, if you can find are. a good one. And let me know if you do. I can link it in the, or in the comments. Yeah, and then getting one of these has been pretty handy for the two inch tape, just like a table tape dispenser. And that's that. I feel pretty confident that that won't get hurt. And it's going in that big box right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so at this point, we've shipped everything from yesterday. And I just want to solidify the supplies, everything that we use. We do have a good link to that. So the link is in the description below. You can get there also by doing caterpiecrew.com. It'll bring you to our link tree. So once you're here, you know, you can check out the Discord if you're interested in that, our socials, everywhere to contact us. 15% off if you contact me elsewhere for eBay items. And then you'll get down to here. So this is under the referral area, business supplies I use. I have two links. One takes you to Amazon, one to eBay. I order supplies from both of those. Here's what the eBay one will look like. We've got hyperlinks for every single box that I use. This is very helpful. It's super, super helpful. Like this is stuff that I reorder from every week. Yeah. Uh, these are uh, things that I've taken years to get the best deals on the best items that have good quality. And then, you know, here's what Amazon will take you to. This one's uh, pretty well set up. Products I use and recommend. There's 40 items there. Um, you know, bigger box sizes for like Rock Band and Guitar Hero, stuff like that. Here's all of our, all the best poly bags. Here's the silent tape that we love. Don't, no. don't tape your babies. Do not do that. <laughs> so don't. It's a weird picture. <laughs> the receipt book that I use all the time, the card scanner, all that stuff you can find in these links. I highly recommend checking them out because I stand by these products that we've put there and I use them myself. If there's anything else you guys wanna know, let me know down in the comments. Put your questions down there. We are pretty interactive to the comments on this second channel. I appreciate you guys coming and we'll see you next time. Bartle Dude.